So this is not a clickbait. If you are running any of Intel's 13th, 14th gen CPUs that have a TDP over 65 watts, most likely your CPU can be in trouble. And it's very important that we fix it. If you haven't heard about what the issue is, I highly recommend checking out the previous video where I'll go more about the issue. But in this video, I'm gonna give you every single piece of information, how to fix it, everything that you can do to actually mitigate this problem or actually get this issue solved or as much solved as possible. So point number one, if you are already experiencing any instability issues with your platform, if you're running any of these CPUs or crashes or some kind of weird behavior and you're thinking this might be a CPU, highly recommending taking it back to your retailer or issuing an RMA from Intel already because Intel has released a statement that they're upgrading or extending the warranty from three years to five years or adding extra two years. Uh, from different regions, it might be slightly different. There's no point trying to fix the issue if you've seen already any issues. Try to get your CPU replaced already if you haven't yet, because then you extend your CPU life another five years, which is obviously good news. So I highly recommend do that. So go back to your retailers, or if they can help you, most likely they can and they should. Go back to Intel and they're saying that they should replace it. Point number two is update your BIOS, update your BIOS, update your BIOS. Whatever you're running right now, make sure that you are running the latest BIOS update because that is one of the most important thing what can cause instability there and higher voltages or cause further damage into your future CPUs or the CPU's life in the future. So I'm gonna show an example how I'm gonna fix it on this PC here. So this is the Fractal Terra build that we did. It's got an i7-14700K, but we've uh, kind of upgraded the cooling to the Noctua nhd 15 g 2 The motherboard in there is the ROG Strix Z790i gaming Wi-Fi, as you can see this one in here. So this is not just with Asus motherboards, whatever manufacturer motherboards you're using, Gigabyte, NZXT, ASRock, MSI, it works the same. You go to the motherboard listing, find the exact motherboard listing on the motherboard manufacturer's website. There's something that calls support, and usually it's often support under this motherboard. And then there we go, driver and tools, or there might be already BIOS or something like that in there. And as you can see here, I'm going to click drive and drills and BIOS firmware. Here we can see all the different BIOSes that have been released for this motherboard. So as you can see, the latest one is on 7th of July. This one already includes the microcode 0x125 and it updates the Intel management engine as well. But there should be a further update fix from Intel coming mid-August. So when you're watching this, there might be a new one available or soon there will be a new one available. But I want to release this video as soon as possible so you can actually do that. Intel has said that they will release an update mid-August, something for the microcode, which will be obviously coming through the BIOS. So update your BIOS again until then. But that's step two. So what I'll do is I'll download this, extract all, and as you can see, we have it here. There is a BIOS renamer if you wanna use the USB BIOS flashback tool on this, but I'll show you the more convenient, well, not convenient really, but just the more safe tool that I'd like to do. So put your USB stick on a USB port because I've got this hive. I've got extra ports for my motherboard in there. Let's open this drive there. As you can see, I've got some other bits on some other, that's usually my BIOS update uh, USB stick. So we'll just pull this one there. You don't need the BIOS renamer there. You just need the cap file because that will be like the new BIOS version in there. So as you can see, we've got only one thing in there. If you have other bits on your USB drive, just try to delete them because it's helpful if there's only one. So once you've done that, restart and then start hitting delete button. Okay, if you've got a Bluetooth keyboard, it might not work like it didn't work for me uh, because when it's BIOS, it might not turn the Bluetooth on yet. So I've got another keyboard that's got an actual wireless controller there. So we're gonna do it that way. We'll restart it again. So try to find the keyboard that's either USB connected or actual 2.5 wireless connector that USB stick is in there because then it knows that there's keyboard connected. So now in the BIOS, I'm gonna hit F7 because that brings up advanced, okay? And then we're gonna go to tool. And then one of them there is Asus Easy Flash 3 Utility. Now different motherboards might call it something differently, but it's like BIOS, flash, something like that. Hit enter. Now on the left side on storage devices, I'm gonna look for my USB stick, which is this one here. 
And as you can see, this here is the RG Strix Z790i Wi-Fi ASUS 2402. And when I'm gonna say yes, you wanna read the file, yes. So as you can see here, now you can see that the version I'm updating to is 2402, but the version I have is 2301. So let's update the BIOS. Now let it do its thing. It's probably gonna restart a few times. L let it do that. Just wait until it's done. Okay, seems like BIOS is updated. Now please press F1 to enter the BIOS again. Now, as you can see, the BIOS version top left is 2402. So we've got that sorted. I'm gonna press F7 again. And what we're gonna go there is AI tweak Tweaker. And as you can see, the performance preference now is Intel default settings. This tells you now here what the Intel default settings are and the power which will be applied to that one. The only thing we're gonna actually change is the XMP. Well, we can go XMP tweaked actually. XMP2, as you can see here, it shows you that um, XMP1 and XMP tweaked is basically when Asus knows that there's some kind of tweaked or improved performance timings or something on the RAM. I'm gonna load the DIMMs defaults and enforce all limits. That's one of the main pits. And now the point three that I'm trying to show you here is that make sure that you are running Intel's default settings. Now, most likely the mother motherboard manufacturers now with the latest updates will force Intel's limits, not Asus's limits, which in there, don't go to the Asus advanced profile because what will happen is now everything just goes unlimited. Let BIOS optimize the multi-core enhancement, which means that your CPU is just going to run like such high voltage. So we're going to go Intel's defaults, what we're going to see there. And the only thing that I will apply is the XMP. Okay, multi-core enhancement, make sure this is enforce all limits. So this puts all the Intel's defaults there. So we're not going to put too much voltage onto the CPU, hopefully. But when you're updating the BIOS with, you know, the later versions of the BIOS, you should see even bigger optimization or better optimization for what's going on. For me, because uh, I am a creator, I also make sure that the iGPU multi-monitor is on because P PEG slot, I think they're in PCA slot. So, because uh, I need the iGPU there. And then once everything is done, you can go save changes and reset or press F10, which is exactly the same. So as you can see now, what you can see has happened is the RAM timings are the ones that we just changed here all of these but intel default settings are actually applied so we're just going to press enter training the ram amber vga now there we go and green post voila okay new bios is working so now what we have to do is make sure that the power settings have been applied see what actually happens to the temperatures and so on let's take a look at the voltage and so on so on the right here we can see ooh, it's still pushing a lot of voltage through 1.45. Uh, that's quite a lot. Asus, Intel, unless my CPU is already cooked, which then they try to put even more voltage there. But look at that. That's that's quite a lot. 1.2 would be somewhere nice to see. And then let's take a look at these core temperatures here as well and the wattage. So let's press go on this and see what happens here. Firstly, wattage, it should be 256. Thermal throttle for a minute, but then all right. And as you can see, the core temperatures, maximum 96, some of these peak cores. What's the voltage like right now? 1.25. Some of the E cores were 1.26. 32,000 points, it's pretty good, but I'm still not quite happy with the voltages. 1.46, that's a little bit, much unless they know that the cpu is already cooked and i've already kind of ruined the cpu let me try that again so peak of five is 93 degrees there when it's full load the voltages aren't that bad 1.25 1.26 1.265 what are the clock speeds when they're trying to do that still rather hot the cpu so it tries to do all core five gigahertz as you can see there one pico goes 5.1 i would love to know if you're using 14700k 13700k or any of the 13 14 gen if you're doing cinebench try to do this test as well i'd love to know what your voltages are like when you are on a load with the latest bios update like if you have the same bios or even earlier bios so comment cpu 
what your voltages are, what the wattages are there, because 1.47, that's quite a lot. I might have to RMA my 4700K. So this is so far what we know how to fix this issue. These three points, but the main point is Intel stock settings and update your BIOS, update your BIOS. Hopefully that will change it because Intel's new microcode update should actually fix the issue. That's what Intel says. But uh, this is all good news for AMD users and AMD platform, you guys, because they're saying, we're fine. No issues there. Uh, so uh, should I swap to AMD again? Is it time to start recommending AMD again? But if you want to reach out to me, I'll get back to all of my Minect messages in the video description below. Like the video, subscribe if you found it helpful and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.